Good morning, everybody, on America's Newsroom, live from the White House this morning. We're honored to sit down with the vice president after a big jobs report was just released. Vice President Mike Pence joining us. What a jobs number that was, Mr. Vice President, 263,000 jobs. Uh, last month that was more than expected and then that headline unemployment rate that we all watched dropped to 3.6 percent that is a 49 year low for this country that's right it's really remarkable and uh, good to have you here at the White House Thank Sandra you. you know what 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 people are witnessing is that the agenda that President Trump ran on and that we've been delivering on over the last two years is working for every American I mean, this jobs report, 263,000 jobs in the month of April, and, and the lowest unemployment rate in nearly 50 years is simply a confirmation of what the president has said all along. If you let Americans keep more of what they earn, you cut taxes on individuals and businesses, you roll back federal red tape, you unleash American energy, you fight for the kind of trade deals that put American jobs and American workers first, that the American economy would come roaring back, and we're witnessing it. And it's, uh, it's truly inspiring. A first quarter number of 3.2 percent after eight years yeah. under Obama and Biden, where we saw less than 2 percent economic growth. Uh, this is a great day for America, and uh, it's all a result of the leadership you know, that President Trump's was, been advancing on the economy. Wage growth was always a concern as the economy was booming. A lot of folks were quick to point out we're not seeing wages budge, but right. then we saw wages start to come up. This report didn't so much reflect uh, that growth, so that could be an area of concern going forward. With 2020 quickly approaching, though. No. But wages are growing, though, Sandra. It really is important. Mm -hmm. Back when I was governor of Indiana, a state where heavy manufacturing, you know, the, the last administration, the last president said, what are you going to do, wave a magic wand to bring manufacturing mm -hmm. back? Now in this number and, and over the last two years, we've seen manufacturing come roaring back. Mm -hmm. And what's most exciting, remember when President Trump said the forgotten men and women of America would be forgotten no more? We're talking about working Americans who weren't seeing their wages rise, weren't seeing incomes rise. Now we're seeing the most rapid increase in wages in the last 10 years. And the best increase in wages over the last year has been among working Americans, mm -hmm. blue collar Americans, like the folks I was with in Dearborn, Michigan, like the folks I was just with in, in down in Norfolk. Virginia. I mean, working Americans know this economy is working for them. Because that's where you're going to hear 2020 Democrats push back on this robust economy. They're going to say that not all Americans are benefiting from those tax cuts, deregulation, booming stock market. To that, you say what? Well, I think, I think the Washington Post gave Joe Biden four Pinocchios on that assertion. He said that the president's tax cuts weren't being felt by middle-class mm. Americans, and uh, the American people know differently. Yeah. That's why you saw that, that recent poll number by another network that actually reflected on a strong approval rating for the president's leadership on the economy. But look, in the campaign and everyday sense, yeah. this businessman turned president has said, if, if, if you cut taxes, roll back regulation, fight for free and fair and reciprocal trade, you unleash American energy, that the American economy will do as it's always done. We'll start creating jobs, creating opportunity, and that's exactly what we're seeing in the jobs You hear so today. much about the stock market doesn't re accurately reflect economic growth in this country while it is up over, the Dow is up over 40 percent since right. this president was elected into office. The you stock market about is the soaring. It is soaring, president. and it is, I, I know, reacting and remember that makes a real. Remember that makes a real difference for Americans, 401ks and their retirements. I mean, we always, a lot of people talk about Wall Street and yeah. the stock market, but we're talking about people's retirements. Do you we're have talking a about real wealth for Americans growing economy? because of this expanding economy. What do you look at? Do you look at the stock market to, to indicate how strong and robust this economic boom is? What is your favorite indicator? Well, I, I, think, I think for us, the stock market is a, a daily indicator of what's happening, what attitudes are in the marketplace, but it's really all about jobs yeah. in this administration. Yeah. What this president knew we could do and said we could do in 2016 was bring jobs and bring growth back. Today, 263,000 jobs. Can it continue? April. And again, the lowest unemployment rate since 1969. I was 10 years old <laughs> the last time the unemployment rate was this low. Really and I think, I think this is a great day for every American, especially for working Americans. Got to move on to some of the big, uh, other big news of the morning, and that is this uh, New York Times report on the FBI having sent an investigator 
posing as an assistant to spy on uh, then-Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos, uh, and that person asked about uh, inner workings of the campaign, if there, any were, right. uh, if there were any with Russia. What's your response to that? This well, it's very troubling. Uh, just as the report a week ago that two discredited FBI agents were actually conversing about sending a counterintelligence official to one of my first intelligence briefings during the transition. Look, two years of investigation, $35 million, full cooperation by this administration, no executive privilege ever provided. We all fully cooperated, and the Mueller report is in. Uh, no collusion, no obstruction. That it's, it, it's, it's done, as the president said on your air just yesterday. But beyond that, we've got to get to the bottom of how all this started. I mean, the American people have a how right to that? know how this investigation even began. And, and as the attorney general said when he testified before Congress, there was spying. We need to understand why there Were you was, spying? whether there was a sufficient predicate. Well, I think we need to find out. We really need to get to the bottom of, of how this all began. And, and if there was a violation of the rules, if the law was broken, the people that were responsible need to be held accountable. I know your former chief of staff re has responded to some reports that your transition team was spied on. Has there been any revealed evidence of that? Or Well, all, all, I see, all I've seen is what the, the texts that came out a week ago have shown. But I have to tell you, it's, it's, it's very offensive to me. At a time when we were beginning the process of organizing our government, nine days after the election, these two disgraced FBI agents were actually corresponding about sending a counterintelligence guy, I think that's what a CI guy is, to my intelligence briefing. While we're trying to form a government, while I'm getting briefed on everything that's happening around the world, just as the president was, so we're preparing mm. to take the reins on January 20th. Look, the American people aren't going to tolerate this. We, we, we put out all the facts on the table, no collusion, no obstruction, but now the American people have a right to know how all this started, and if the law was violated, those people need to be held accountable. You mentioned the president going on our air for an interview last evening with Catherine Herridge, and in that interview he was asked about William Barr deciding not to testify before um, that House committee right. on Thursday. He said that he believes that Barr made the right call and that it was ultimately his choice. Do you think he should have appeared? I, I fully support the Attorney General's decision. Um, but I served on the Judiciary Committee for 11 years. I can recall no occasion where lawyers for the majority of the minority questioned a member of a president's cabinet under either party. I mean, I served under a Democrat president, I served under a Republican president. Members of the Judiciary Committee, elected members of Congress, ought to be able to do their job and ask the questions, and we fully support the Attorney General's decision not to appear. And now you're hearing uh, a further push by House Democrats. They want Don McGahn, former White House counsel, to testify. Should he? Well, I think the President's indicated, well, he'll make a decision about, about whether or not uh, the executive privilege is executive. But let, let's remember here, Don McGahn was made available to the special counsel and by most reports provided more than 30 hours of testimony all of which contributed to the report that concluded that there was no collusion and no obstruction. I mean, the, the, the Congress has that report available. They have the information available. There are certain redactions that are required under the law for grand juries, but a limited number of members of Congress have access even beyond that. Mm. So the, the information is there for them to look at. But as the President said last night, it's time for us to get back to mm. business. I mean, today's jobs report the news, 263,000 jobs are created, the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. Mm -hmm. That's where our focus should be, and that's what the president said last night. Let's go to work on solving the crisis at our southern border. Let's close the loopholes. Let's fix this broken immigration system. Let's do an infrastructure bill that will rebuild our highways and roads and bridges mm -hmm. and ports and airports. Let's, let's take steps to lower drug prices, as the president said. Let's keep negotiating better and fairer trade deals. You know, it's, it's time for Congress to, to move beyond, move beyond the controversies of the last two years 
and focus on the kind of things that will create even more good news in our economy, more opportunities for America, and a stronger and more secure nation. Now to the events that continue to unfold in Venezuela, certainly chaos in the streets there as uh, um, and Nicolas Maduro uh, is not stepping away and seeing no signs of that Juan Guaido calling for a military uprising in the streets there. There was an interaction I want to ask you about this week, and it happened with a freshman member of Congress, uh, Ilan Omar. Uh, she, she took on the Trump administration and blamed the Trump administration for what we're seeing unfold there. Here she is in her own words. A lot of the policies uh, that we have put in place has kind of helped lead um, the devastation in Venezuela. And we've sort of set the stage um, for where we are arriving today. You responded uh, to her directly in a tweet, Mr. Vice President, and you said, as Venezuelans take to the streets to stand for their freedom against an oppressive dictator, Democrat Congresswoman Ilhan Omar chooses socialism over freedom, you wrote. The Trump administration stands with the freedom-loving people of Venezuela. Why did you feel compelled to respond? Well, because the Congresswoman doesn't know what she's talking about. Nicolas Maduro is a socialist dictator who's taken what was once one of the most prosperous nations in this hemisphere and, and brought it literally to a level of deprivation and oppression and poverty that we have never seen. Nine out of 10 people in Venezuela live in poverty. Three million people have fled Venezuela. That's not a result of US policies. That's a result of the dictatorship and socialism that has been imposed on the people of Venezuela by Nicolas Maduro. And from early in this administration, President Trump has made it clear the United States is not going to stand idly by while the people of Venezuela suffer under oppression and dictatorship and cool. socialism. We've taken decisive steps and made it clear. Nicolas Maduro has no legitimate claim to power, and Nicolas Maduro must go. I couldn't be more proud of the way President Trump directed uh, our administration to be the first nation on earth to recognize Juan Guaido as the legitimate president of Venezuela. Now more than 50 nations have joined us. Uh, nations all across this hemisphere, all across the world are standing with us. And we're going to continue to stand with the legitimate president of Venezuela and with the National Assembly until freedom and democracy are restored. When's the last time you talked to Juan Guaido? Have you spoken with him recently? I met with Juan Guaido. Of course, our administration's in regular contact with him mm -hmm. uh, and with many uh, of the, uh, the opposition leaders in Venezuela How and with leaders across the region. But I, I met Juan Guaido when I, when I traveled to Colombia just mm -hmm. a few short months ago. I have to tell you, this is a remarkably courageous young man. He and his wife, Fabiana, have stepped forward to lead their nation back to freedom. But the, the very idea that, uh, that the United States is somehow responsible for what's happening in Venezuela is absurd. But what's happening a, in Venezuela is a result is of a dictatorship and oppression and the socialist policies that Maduro and his predecessor imposed on this once prosperous nation. There, of course, is a fair question, Mr. Vice President, how far the United States should get involved. We heard Secretary of State Mike Pompeo say this week all options are on the table, and that includes military options. How, how involved are we at this point? First of all, well, we've we've put unprecedented sanctions uh, on the Maduro regime, on individuals in the regime, and on enterprises in the regime. We've marshaled unprecedented diplomatic pressure. What about and the military we're, option? We're going to continue to do all of that, but all options are on the table. I mean, for more than two years, President Trump has made it clear that that we we reserve all options. And, and the, the capacity of the United States of America to pursue our interests in this region uh, are unquestionable. Is there a tipping point? Are we there? Well, I, I think the president said yesterday there's always a tipping point, but we hope for a peaceful transition of power yeah. in Venezuela. That's why we're going to continue to stand strong. We're going to continue to pave the way for a better, brighter future for the people of Venezuela, continue to stand with Juan Guaido. And I have to tell you, um, I think every American should be proud of the stand that President Trump has taken for freedom in this hemisphere by standing with the freedom-loving people of Venezuela. All right, we will see where all of that goes. And I know you've got a big day today, Mr. Vice President. You're heading down to Louisiana to tour uh, three African-American churches in that state. Why? Well, 
it's heartbreaking to think that in the span of just 10 days, uh, a short time ago, uh, three uh, uh, black churches in Louisiana were burned at the hand of an arsonist. And, it, and, and I'll be traveling to Mount Pleasant Baptist Church today and meeting with the pastors of those three churches. And we just wanted them to know that we are with them at, at a time when we see the unspeakable violence against uh, a synagogue last week in, in California and last fall in Pittsburgh, when we see the attacks in New Zealand against mosques. Uh, we want to make it clear to people of faith that we are with them. Just as the president said yesterday at the National Day of Prayer, that uh, these attacks on people of faith must stop. No one should ever fear for their safety uh, in a house of worship. And it'll be my great honor to stand with and to pray with those pastors, although I've already been inspired by their example. Mm -hmm. I heard the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church had Easter services in uh, what remained of that church just You'll a few head short down there days today. ago. And we look forward to a time of fellowship and worship. But this administration stands with people of every faith in this nation and will always stand for religious Mr. freedom. Mr. Vice President, it was an honor. Thank you for having us here today. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you.